This is Ubiquiti's Unify Express. It has everything a home user or a very small business might need. This little guy has side-to-side -side VPN, remote user VPN, Wi-Fi 6 with dual band antenna, and it comes with Unify controller, which can control Unify Express itself and four additional Unify devices. Just like any Unify router, Unify Express supports multiple networks, blocking content based on country, domain, or even application. In this video, I'll show you how to start from scratch and configure Unify Express. I'll configure multiple wireless networks so that we can isolate user network from IoT devices and guests to decrease the risk of getting hacked. Now, being Express, it only has one Ethernet LAN interface. And if you want to have more Ethernet ports, you can use Unify Flex Mini, which is a managed switch from Ubiquiti for only $29. By the way, I have a video about that switch and I'll put the link on the description. You can have different networks on Flex Mini switch and have trunk interface between switch and Unify Express. Now let's log in to see what can we do with this tiny and mighty device. First thing you want to do is plug the power, connect the LAN port, to the computer and then connect the ISP Ethernet cable to the WAN port. Now, once you connect the Unify Express to your computer and the computer gets the IP address, you can type Unify in the address bar of the browser and hit the enter. You'll see the screen, this Unify Express, and we'll start configuring from here. I'm gonna call it Unify Express. I'm not gonna change anything here. Then I'm gonna click next. Now here, if you have Unify account already, click sign in. On the bottom here, you can click sign in and enter credentials. If you don't, you can create it from here. The account will help you manage the Unify Express from outside your LAN subnet, let's say from the internet, from phone and things like that. So I'm gonna sign in because I already have the Unify account. Now here's the backup because I already worked with this Unify Express. I'm not going to restore anything and we'll see how it works. Now, first thing first, you want to configure the Wi-Fi because this is how the wizard goes. You name your Wi-Fi, whatever you want. Now let's name it YouTube Lab Tutorials and some kind of password. I'm gonna finish it. Now it will take about five minutes to get to configure. Meanwhile, you'll see some screens on the screen. It's a setting up and two minutes and 20 seconds. Actually, this wallpaper here, the tiny little wallpaper, really looks like the wallpaper from uh, from Mac from back in the days. You know, after several minutes, this will be done. Pretty much that's it. If you don't want extra Wi-Fi networks, this device is already working. Here's my widget, which I have on my computer. And here's the gateway. This is the IP address of the Unify Express. And then my LAN IP, which is my computer's IP, and the WAN IP, which is public IP of this Unify Express. Now, this is not the real IP and is not reachable from outside the world, from the internet, should I say, because this is the ISP simulation inside my lab. It's still public IP though, but it's not reachable from outside and it's not mine. So I'm gonna click go to dashboard here. And now I have to enter the credentials, which I already had that I put during the installation. Now let's go to the unifyui.com and enter the credentials. And here, the this Unify Express is here, this one. Now left one is the other lab. Don't don't mind that. I have the other equipment for the other videos with uh, UCG Ultra, but this one is Unify Express. I'm gonna click here. Now, by the way, if you never dealt with the Unify devices, this is how it looks like. This is how the dashboard looks like. And you have here pretty much everything you might need in the home or small business. For example, you have Wi-Fi technology, so you'll know which technology is being used when users are connected to the Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi 4, 5, 6, and things like that. Now, here is the one IP. Again, this is not the real one IP. This is my lab simulated ISP IP address. This is the IP address of the Unify Express itself. This is what we use as the gateway. You also have system uptime here. I have internet. The cool feature is that the Unify can recognize who is your ISP. So here I have optimum online for my lab network. I have optimum for my production for my home. It's a different ISP. And then uptime is 100% and activity is how much traffic is currently being used through this Unify Express. We also have the delay information toward 
towards the famous sites, for example, Microsoft, Google, Cloudflare, and we have Internet Health. Now here we also have the Internet Activity. You can switch it back once you have some data because you start using it, you have more and more data. Now, if I go here into Unify devices, I'll see only one device, this Unify Express, because as you remember, this device can support up to five unified devices so this one is included so you can connect four additional unified devices for example a switch or a different access point to get more coverage on wi-fi clients are any ip device that goes through the Unify Express. Now, in this case, there's a main office, which is my virtual computer, which is what you see right now. And there's a MacBook, which is my host computer, where I run this virtualization of Windows. Here's the port section. We can see the LAN port and the WAN port. Not much to do here, especially on the WAN port. On the LAN port, you can still do some changes, for example, make the VLAN configuration, things like that. Radio. In the radio, you can see all your access points connected to this controller. Now, this being one the and only access point in this specific Unify Express right now, we only that's that's the only thing we see. If I connect another access point, we'll see that here as well. Now, coverage is how good it is covering, what covering, and once you connect clients, you'll have more data here. Connectivity is about the same. Environment is what's going on around how many access points are around, what access points are around, and then speed test. To speed test, you gotta use the Unify Wi-Fi Man, the app on the iPhone or Android, and let's go into the networks. Now, on the networks, you see all the networks you have, and statistics is just that. It's statistics, up, down, one week, one month, system logs, updates, admin activities, clients, X points, and let's go into the settings. I want to configure two additional Wi-Fi SSID here. First Wi-Fi is gonna be for users. The second is gonna be for surveillance cameras and the or IoT device, should I say. And the third is gonna be for guests. And this is where the settings are. You can create multiple SSIDs and have the same subnet or you can have different subnets. Let's go into the networks and I'm going to create this subnet for the IoT devices. New virtual network. IoT. And let's make the auto. This is the next subnet. The first one is dot one in the third octet. And this is automatically dot two. This is DHP server automatically configured. And this advanced settings also automatically configured. For example, let's see what's going on here. This is the VLAN ID too, which means if you want to reach this subnet from the LAN port, while the LAN port is in trunk mode, you gotta use VLAN ID too. Then is this the guest net network? No. Is it the isolated network? Well, the isolation here is between hosts. So if your IoT devices needs to communicate to each other, you don't want to enable that. Let's say if you have sensors, Wi-Fi sensors, and Wi-Fi hub for the automation, home automation, and those Wi-Fi sensors needs to communicate with the Wi-Fi hub, if you enable this, it's going to break connection. So do not enable that if the IoT devices needs to communicate to each other. Now, the guest network is not IoT for sure, so I'm not enabling that. Allow internet access? Depends, again. If it's really Internet of Things devices, then yeah, you need internet there, right? Then content filtering. Well, since there is no user sitting on this IoT, you might not want to enable this because uh, block explicit, paragraphic, and malicious domains. Well, actually, malicious domains, they can go. If the IoT devices are hacked, they will definitely go to the malicious website. So let's enable that. Let's do it for work because family also blocks the VPN. And I don't know, depends on your IoT devices. You might need to block VPN. It might not. So I'm going to block. I know for sure that my printer should not go to the any domain or any website using the VPN. And I'm gonna click add. Now I have two networks, default, which is for users and IoT. Let's create the guest network, guests. And again, automatically this is third network and add. Now let's go to the Wi-Fi. Network is default. If I create the IoT, 
SID. And I'm going to put the password in it. I want to choose IoT sublet for that, or should I say IoT network. And I can go into manual mode and change things if I want to. For example, if my IoT devices are not using 5 GHz, I can disable that. There's no reason to advertise that on a 5 GHz network. Or if I want to have two IoT devices, 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz, I can split them like this. 2.4 and the new IoT IoT SID will be IoT 5 GHz, just to differentiate between them if I need to. In this case, I'm going to put both and then I'm going to leave everything as is. Add network. Now, this is the IoT SID for home automation, printers, and anything that is not user device, for example, not computer. Smartphones probably should be into IoT devices. Again, depends what you are holding on your smartphone, how sensitive is data. But thing is that um, you don't want any IoT devices, cloud managed AI IoT device being hacked from the cloud by someone and then start accessing your user network, computers and uh, NAS servers and things like that. So depends on your needs. You got to put it in the IoT SID or in the default. YouTube lab tutorials in my case. And the third SID is for guests. Again, put the password. Network is going to be guests. Okay. I'm going to click add Wi Fi network. And that's it. The Unify Express is configured with multiple networks and multiple SIDs. Each SID has corresponding subnet. And now what I what we want to do is mark the guest network as the guest and then block the access from the guest to the user. Let's go here and see if there is any guest here. Nope, there is not. Let's go into networks. And the network should have here, guests. I'm going to click guest here. Now, if I go into security and I'll check rule sets in advanced mode, let's see if the guest network is really blocked to access our LAN network. I'm going to switch all here and I'm going to click guest in to see what rule sets are assigned to the traffic that comes from the guest network. This one. Okay, so allow DNS packets to external name server. Yeah, fair enough. Allow packets to guest portals. Yes, if you're running the guest portal on the Unify Express, you want to allow that. Capital portal the same. Allow packets to Hello subnets. Now, this is interesting here. Let's see what's going on here. Hello packets to allow subnets. This rule looks like it will allow you to access the LAN network, but it won't. I'm pretty sure it won't. And then drop packets to restricted subnets. Here, this is the one that blocks the traffic to the internal networks. Now, the, the bad thing is that uh, you don't really see how it is blocking. You just see there is a rule. I prefer to see that, uh, you know, source is the guest subnet, destination is the internal subnet, so like user and IoT, and then action is blocked, right, or drop. But by default, that's not how Ubiquiti builds these default rule sets. So you just need to trust this rule will work and, of course, test it. And let's go into the security. If you want to block based on the country, for example, you want to allow incoming traffic from United States only because you are in the United States, okay? You're gonna say it like this. So now every incoming traffic from not United States will be blocked. So there's less chance for the hackers to access your devices from the outside United States. Depends where you live. You might want to put your country here. DNS shield. It's good to enable because that way we are using the DNSSEC automatically and ISP or man in the middles won't see what websites are you accessing. So let's enable that. And that's it. Now in the routing, we have new option, which is network address translation, but there is no network address translation. And guess what? When you reset this device, it will reset the unified controller version as well in it. 
because Unify Controller is an application running on Unify OS, and the factory reset doesn't just delete the configuration, it will also downgrade the Unify Controller. So if I upgrade the Unify Controller, I will have the ability to change the default name here to the users, for example, and I will see the network address translation configuration tab here, which you won't need to use at all for this home user or small business. Now let me show you how to update and we are done for this though. First of all, and that's it. That's how you configure the multiple subnets and multiple SIDs. If you want to change this default name, you need to update the network controller because when I resetted this unified controller for the YouTube video, it downgraded the unified controller itself because that's how it works. So for that, you're gonna go here and then click the update. It will take about maybe two, three, or even five minutes, but it will do automatically and you want to do that pretty often unless, you know, this is enabled. That's it for now. Make sure you are updating your devices. This was the video about how to configure multiple SIDs and the networks on Unify Express from scratch. Thanks for watching.